Whether you're looking for answers to specific life questions or simply hoping to become the best version of you possible, welcome to the Mental Breakdown and Psych Reg podcast, where we offer insight, information, and strategies based upon research and years of practice as psychologists. So sit back, have a listen, and get connected with our hosts, Dr. Bernie Wilkinson and Dr. Richard Marshall. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about a model, an idea that we have, you know, kind of putting some things together uh, to address some of the issues that we've been talking about related to school violence and, and school safety in general and those kinds of issues. Yeah, we've been discussing that for a couple of weeks. Yeah. It's been in the news for the last couple of weeks. And um, people, the challenge always is, okay, so what should we do about it? Right. You know, whether it's a learning problem or a behavior problem or, in this case, a violence problem. Uh, what should we do about it? Right. So part of our time has been spent, okay, what can we do? Mm-hmm. Because the, the unanswered question is how do we identify who might be a shooter? Right. You know, how, what is it about these shooters? Are there any common features besides being white and young? Right. Or white, male, and young? Right. Um, that, are there any other common features that we could use to predict who might be at highest risk right. for doing something like this. Right. And we really don't know right. how to do that yet. We right. don't have the technology or the, uh, the, the protocols to do that. Right. And, and we've talked about, you know, over the ca- last couple of weeks, we talked about some of the limitations we have with predicting. That's uh, right. Because we can't, uh, you know, all the things that we try to use to predict, predict this, um, right. you know, mental illness. Well, we, we right. talked about that in detail that Mental illness is not mm-hmm. a, a reliable predictor. Right. Uh, there are far more people with mental illness that don't mm-hmm. become violent than there are those right. who become violent. Um, we talked about um, you know environmental um, stressors and issues right. that could be related to it. We talked about educational mm-hmm. issues that could be. And again, the problem just comes down to right. you know the the incidence of school mass shootings, school right. violence of that sort, mm-hmm. is such a, a um, low incident, um, it has such a low rate of incidence right. that, that, you know, you can't predict those kinds it's of very, things. The, the lower the incidence, of anything. the harder it is to predict. Right. Okay. Um, shortly after uh, the shooting, I, I was doing a talk at right. a school, and I said, it was parents and teachers, and I said, if I could give you a way that you could identify with 99% accuracy mm-hmm. that you right. could predict with 99% accuracy would you like that and they said absolutely I said well your school has about a thousand students that means that who are the 100 mm-hmm. because even with a 1% right now you have 100 kids out of this whole group how do you how would you what would you do with those hundred right you can't screen them all right and you might even miss that the shooter might not be in the 100 Right, you know, but you even if you have a ninety nine percent accuracy rate, you're still looking at over a hundred kids right. who, who are poten- and there aren't that many potential shooters in right. a in a school. Right. Okay. Right. So you're you're misidentifying a large number of people. Right. Right. Well, so so today we're going to talk about um, a, a, an approach mm-hmm. that we think would right. be effective, or you know, if if we you know, put it together in mm-hmm. such a way that it could be used in, in schools um, and throughout the school systems to, right. to help address some of these issues. Right. You know, right now, the, the president and the um, governor, governor mm-hmm. uh, here in Florida have proposed and or signed, mm-hmm. um, signed you know, bills to arm teachers. Right. In the state of Florida, that was one of the one of the solutions now for school shootings mm-hmm. is we're going to arm teachers right. or, or school staff. It may not be right. teachers, but it'll be people right. in the school building. And, and, you know, the and as we talked about, you know, before when we talked about this, um, I'm, we're not sure that this is a, a solution. Um, we don't know. Because you can't really we're not going you to can't really know. test it. No, you know mm-hmm. if if um, you know if you arm a, a school staff in all of the schools here in Polk County, right. for example, and for the next five years there's n- there are no school shootings. Mm-hmm. Does that mean that it was effective? Because yeah. we haven't had any in the last five years. Right. So you can't 
really you know you're never going to know whether it's the guns or something else right okay so it's it's never something that you're going to be able to test and say yes this is right. what's doing it so it has an intuitive appeal right. we might feel some comfort knowing that there are other guns in a school right some people are going to be comforted by that mm -hmm. other people are going to feel discomfort right over knowing that there are other guns in a school mm -hmm. where are they mm -hmm. would anybody possibly have access right and then we brought up the other day about the uh, substitute teacher who whose gun accidentally went off in the classroom. Right. Well, no, we didn't mention that here. We wrote about it in, in our article for the for the ledger. But yeah, the in California, right? right? Mm -hmm. He was a he was a trained reserve police, police officer, officer who was um, who was teaching a class at a high school on gun on, safety. On gun safety. Of and, all things. Yeah. But the irony of it. And he shoot, he accidentally discharges the gun. Why the gun had a cartridge in it when right. he brought it into the building, I'll never know. Right. But this is what gun safety is all about. Is right. That, you know, assume the gun is loaded. Right. Is loaded. Yeah. And, and so, you know, and that just happened, you know, well, th this past Tuesday. It was, right. what, Tuesday the 13th right. um, of, of March. So, yeah. so while, while this whole thing about arming teachers has some intuitive appeal, mm -hmm. it's, it, we're never going to know whether it's effective right. or not. And sadly, we're not going to know if it works until there is a situation. Right. And... What worries me about that is that, as you and I have discussed, the teacher's probably going to have a handgun of some type. Right. And the teacher's going to be confronting somebody with an assault rifle. Possibly a student. And also, it's probably a student. So right. we're asking school staff to shoot a student. Right. Or a former student. Right. In the case of Cruz, it would have been a former student. Right. What if the teacher knows that student? Right. Do you shoot? I mean... It's it's. I don't know what will happen in that high right. high adrenaline, right. highly aroused, very risky situation. Yeah. I'm not sure how it will turn out. Right. But we're and asking a teacher to get right in there. And I think that the other concern is, and something that we haven't really talked about, but something that's come to my mind before is that, um, you know, we have um, we have situations where um, we well. The idea is that these school professionals who are mm -hmm. going to have the guns are going to be unidentified. They're, you know, right. that's we the won't way. know who they are. We won't know who they are. Um, they'll be somewhere on campus, and oh, we, we don't know right. who they will be. Mm -hmm. um, and it's sort of theorized that that will serve as a deterrent for other people to come to this school with guns. Right. Um, to, to Well, I, I think that, again, in theory, that's a great idea, but, you know, I wonder what the statistics are on how much, you know, unmarked police officers, unmarked police cars decrease speeding right. and, and other crimes around cities and things like that. It doesn't seem like it deters those kinds of behaviors all that often. Right. And so when you don't know that there's a, if, there, if that mm -hmm. person is there or who that person is or anything, it, and, and there's risk both ways. If you know who that person is, then, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. Certainly, you could, you know, a potential person could target that person or something like that, or avoid right. that person. But not knowing, I don't know that that we we lose sight that that's a possibility. Right. Um, the other thing, I one of the other issues is that if I am a potential, if I'm a shooter, say, yeah. and I know that there are guns in the school, I'm going to bring bigger guns with me. Right. I'm I'm going to make sure that I can outgun anybody because they're not going to have machine guns and and assault rifles, they're going to have handguns. Right. Okay. Um, because it doesn't make any sense to store them in a, right. in a, in a location somewhere right. because, okay, you have to have it with you. So it's a handgun probably. And I'm just going to make sure that I have more firepower than they do. Right. So now the shooters are going to bring in more firepower mm -hmm. to make sure that they can overcome any resistance that right. they encounter. Right. Okay. Um, so uh, this, this whole, this vocabulary that we use, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, we, we refer to schools as, quote, soft targets. Right. Okay. So we have to, quote, harden the yeah. targets. So we harden them by bringing more weaponry in. Um, that all sounds good, but in real life and in a real shooting situation, I'm not sure that it's going to work right. out as we picture. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's concerning. And, and I, know, <clears throat> I know of a lot of teachers who are mm -hmm. not interested 
in that. Absolutely not. Um, and, and of course, they, nobody will be required to do that. Right. But, you know, but I think that a, a, a final um, thought that has come to my mind about it is we have all seen online images of and videos mm -hmm. of classroom situations where teachers are being heavily confronted by students. And, you know, this is on lots of different media sites mm -hmm. and people often harshly judge uh, and perhaps even rightfully so judge those kinds of situations and say, you know, why are those kids in the classrooms mm -hmm. and why are they, um, you know, allowed to, not allowed to, but um, in a situation where they can talk to and treat a teacher that right. way. Right. You know, so what happens in a situation like that right. where a student who, who perhaps is big, um, especially in high you schools. You mean students who, who are physically, physically intimidating. Physically intimidating. Okay. A, a teacher, and what if that teacher is armed? Right. Oh, yeah. You know, what happens in those kinds of situations? Right. Um, because you know, in Florida, you have a right to defend yourself. Right. So that now does that create that kind of situation? Wow. So that's, that's a new one. There's so many complications to it. And, and so the, the proposal that we're going to talk about today kind of pulls us a little bit away from that just because, uh, again, in my mind, arming teachers is kind of a, a, a higher level intervention than we should really start with. Well, and also, let's say we do all, let's say for a moment, just for the sake of the discussion, that we say, let's arm teachers. Let's, let's all agree that that's a good idea. Okay, first you have the cost. Right. Okay. Besides all the danger and all the risk and all the questions that we're posing, you have a cost. Okay. So first of all, you have to train these people. Tens of hours, mm -hmm. scores of hours of training. Right. Uh, 120? Okay. So if you have 120 hours of training and you do the math, um, how many how much per hour, right. I mean, do you, minimum wage or $10 an hour, $20 mm -hmm. an hour, whatever a teacher makes. So you have to pay each teacher. How many teachers are we talking about? And I've right. got several teachers in each building. In our county, we have a, we have over 150, I think 150 schools. Right. So I, we're talking about five or 600 people right. who have to be trained. Right. So if you do the math, just in our county, it's going to cost millions of dollars. Right. Plus you have to buy all the weapons and the ammunition. The weapons, and the, the trainer, the... the Ten, so in a yeah. state like Florida, we're talking about tens of millions of dollars mm -hmm. for this single intervention. Mm -hmm. So the question that comes up immediately is, okay, let's say we have the money mm -hmm. in, in our state budget to, to do this intervention, mm -hmm. to, to pay for this intervention. Right. Okay. Are there other interventions that we should at least be considering? And right. I think the answer to that is yes, because we have, we know that we have 10% of all students mm -hmm. uh, have a serious mental illness. Right. Now, we don't make accommodations for that currently. Right. We don't make accommodations for that in our public schools. Right. If students become more than schools can manage, mm -hmm. we suspend and expel. Right. Okay. Because schools can't deal with all of these problems. Mm -hmm. But we don't have anything else in place for this This percentage of kids who are seriously mentally mentally ill mm -hmm. wouldn't it be worthwhile at least considering taking money mm -hmm. and come up with systems right. develop systems for these students who are currently being expelled right. remember Cruz was expelled he was right. one of those kids and you start throwing kids onto a trash mm -hmm. heap you you have to expect some response from right. them when 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 institutions like schools and churches and and uh, legal authorities say you're trash. You're exposed. You're you're disposable. Mm -hmm. You have to expect right some response. So should we be having a discussion and considering tens of millions of dollars to solve that problem? Yeah, um, that's that's you know if you want to deal with the mental illness issue, yeah. that would be a start. Yeah. So even if you agree that schools should be mm -hmm. that teachers should be armed. Can we have that much money to do the other interventions? Yeah. Right. And now we're getting into a situation where we don't have that much money. Right. No. no. I mean, I wish the state would. I right. wish state budgets. But all we hear about is we have to cut taxes, mm -hmm. and we don't have the money to do these things. Yeah. We don't have the money for infrastructure repair. We don't have the money right. for, you know. So. so, the 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 plan that we would propose. Right. Um. Is is has two. 
prongs. Mm -hmm. uh, one is prevention and one is reaction, basically. Yeah, one is to prevent it from happening in the first place. Mm -hmm. And the other is what do we do right. in, if, if, unfortunately, right. if a shooting begins. So the reaction, uh, it, I think, is... is more a little more straightforward right. simply because that I mean that's what we're doing now right. um, we're, we're just relying on reactionary mm -hmm. except that we're not really training anybody on what to do we have a we have a we have a response right but we're not training anybody how to use it right, right. There, there's a program called uh, run hide fight right um, there's different iterations of it but the idea is the first thing you do is you try to run away that's right mm -hmm. If you can't run away, then you hide. Mm -hmm. If you can't hide, then you fight. Right. Okay. Um, th there's two concerns uh, with that. One is that we're not training anybody. Um, I don't know that any schools in our district has received any training in that. I don't know of any. I don't know of any. In, in our neighboring county, um, from what we understand, there's just, right, Hillsborough County, there's just been a couple of schools. I know of one school right. um, that has had training. Right. Um, and it was an interesting discovery. Because this is the second part. Right. Um, the, the teacher and, and the school staff thought the, the place to run would be down a particular stairway. Mm -hmm. And the professionals who were there said, no, that would be the last thing you should do. Right. Because you're running right into right. Uh, danger. Okay. Right. And so the teachers were really, really relieved that they had had the training because yeah. they would have done the wrong thing. Right. So, and, and which is the second concern is that run, hide, fight is mm -hmm. not always the sequence that you should follow. Right. You know, it, sometimes if you're on the second floor, it might be better to hide first, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. lock the door, barricade the door, and hide first, right. um, as opposed to running. Because if you're running and you're going, you know, creating an alley right. that everybody's walking mm -hmm. through, you know, you're, you're making it um, more dangerous. That's right. And one of the things, they interviewed one of these experts, and he said, turn the lights off, lock the door, put things in front of the door, because most shooters mm -hmm. are in a hurry. You know, yeah. they know they only have a few minutes. Right. Um, that if they encounter a locked door or a dark room, they're probably going to pass that up and go to a room that's lighted right. and open. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so... The bottom line, as we see it, as it relates to the response side, mm -hmm. is we need better training. Right. We just we just right. need better. We we have schools do fire drills. That's right. And all these other drills all the time. Let's train teachers in how to right. handle these kinds of situations. Did you ever have a fire drill at the university when you were there? At the university, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we did. There. You did. We we had a lot last year, two years ago. Um, yeah, we had a fire drill because uh -huh. they, they keep rehearsing these scenarios yeah. and um, uh, these safety plans. Mm -hmm. And now even universities are having fire drills. No, I really and I was a little bit comforted by that because I would not have used that exit. Mm -hmm. I would have gone in another direction. Mm -hmm. um, but they did. They were very, um, very aware of the wow. day. And they started having fire drills at the university. That's cool. So if they're doing it there, yeah. you know, let's... Um, I think we should be doing it in our schools right. as well. Right. I would like to know if I'm if I was a teacher responsible for kids, I would like to have a professional come in and, yeah. and coach me, mm -hmm. teach me as much as I can to protect them. Right, right. So, so the the reaction, I think it has to start with teacher training right. uh, and and school training, um, so that people know what to do. That's right. Um, and, and you know, the I I've heard people say. You know, well, you know, if you start training people at the school, more often than not, the school shooter is somebody from the school. Right. So they're going to know the plan. That's right. They're going to know the they know the geography of the right of the, of the architecture. So, and, and that's you know granted. Um, but what you do then, of course, is in the training you make it to where even if somebody knows the plan, they still can't really do it. Like um, again, as we were talking about just a second ago, the you know, run, run, hide, fight. Right. You know, if the plan is to hide, um, to barricade the doors, to lock the doors, you know, if you make it to where somebody can't get in, mm -hmm. you know, even if the person knows that's, that's the plan, they're not going to be able to get in. Right. So, right. Um, yeah. You know, if we made it difficult to get into every classroom, like right. if there was some movable object that you could put and lock in place, right. you know, um, especially if you're on the second floor, mm -hmm. you're probably going to be able to keep everybody safe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so that's the prevention arm, in, in, or I'm sorry, that's the, re the response re arm. The response arm. Um, 
And the, the response arm is going to also be influenced by the prevention right. um, problem because right. I think that that's, this is where we really have to put our focus, I think, mm -hmm. is, is with the prevention. And, and I, maybe that sounds like a very obvious statement, mm -hmm. but what are we doing to prevent now? Right. We're not doing anything. I mean, we're, we're saying that Army Teachers is a preventative measure. I'm not confident that that's the case. Right. Um, otherwise, you know, we have school resource officers at schools right. as, as a purported prevention measure. Mm -hmm. But th there was a, remember, again, we got to remember that there was an armed um, officer at the school in Parkland. That's right. And that didn't deter. Didn't deter and didn't him at all. Didn't do anything. Right. So... Um, and, and and I don't I admit that I don't know all of the details right. related to that officer, they, but they, they have, keep showing footage of what that officer was doing or where yeah. he was, and I, I, I just don't know. I right, but but it, regardless, having an armed officer at the school didn't stop Nicholas Cruz from going to the school with guns. And and you hear people say all the time, well, if if the if shooters knew that there were guns in the building, they wouldn't. They right. wouldn't okay, but th then then you have the other issue of there are shootings at military bases yeah where there are guns all over the place yeah or fort hood right okay and the uh, washington dc naval yard yeah there were people all over the place with guns mm -hmm. the shootings still occur right so so we have to focus on prevention right now with the prevention i think th th there are three <laughs> levels with the prevention right and that i i think that we forget about uh because there are three levels that we can start to address mm -hmm. this issue. The first level is the school, is the classroom, classroom. itself. That's <coughs> the, right. I would consider mm -hmm. that like the micro level. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. We have to start doing a better job of helping teachers appreciate what is and is not risky behavior. Right. You know, what is, are there ways to, to um, observe, uh, assess, sort of subtly assess a student? to determine if they're at risk for violent behaviors or not. Um, and there are. One of the things that teachers become very, very good at is identifying what's typical and what's atypical. Once you've seen hundreds of children, right. <clears throat> regardless of what uh, grade you teach, right. you develop this sense of there's something different about mm -hmm. this child. Right. Teachers know. Right. They already possess the knowledge. Right. You go into any teacher's classroom, they will tell you mm -hmm. who they would be concerned about. Right. Teachers already possess the knowledge. Right. We're not using it. Right. But they have it. Right. So so we need to create a system That's right. um, we, through, through in-service training, through yeah. lots of things, so <clears throat> that the teachers can recognize concerning behavior, you know, make sure they can kind of formalize mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. What is concerning behavior? What is not concerning behavior? And then what to do when you have a concern about a student? You know, because they'll tell you this child has no empathy, right? No feelings for anybody. He looks like he's dead inside. You know, mm -hmm. teachers recognize this stuff because right. they see thousands of kids, mm -hmm. and they can spot those that are different. Right. Okay. Let's begin to use that knowledge. Right. Mm -hmm. This once they have that information, the next layer is the, what I would just call the meso layer, uh, which is the second layer, which is the school building. Right, the building itself. The building itself. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it blows my mind that we have, that, that many schools, uh, school systems, have employed people called school counselors mm -hmm. and school psychologists, right. and school social workers, mm -hmm. none of which <clears throat> do those jobs as counselors or psychologists, mm -hmm. they do testing, they do assessments, they do some administrative stuff. But we've worked in schools before. The amount of counseling that we're afforded to do is very small. Minuscule. Very small. Schools should have, especially high schools and middle schools, schools should have a person on campus that is there for the mental health of the students mm -hmm. that does, you know, when teachers have a concern about somebody, this is the person you go to. Right. And that person's sole responsibility is the mental health and emotional development of the student body. That's right. We, we just talked about the classroom. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the teachers know who these students are. 
the problem is teachers can't do anything about it. You know, right. they, they, they will tell the administration, but there is no system in place right. to do anything about this student. Right. So if you have a teacher who says, there's something very different about this mm -hmm. kid, they should be able to go to the school right. level mm -hmm. and say, I'm worried about this kid. Right. This is what I'm seeing, which should trigger a response at the building, at the school level, right. to say, okay, counselor, psychologist, social right. worker, let's keep an eye on this kid. Let's be, find out where he lives. You know, let's learn everything there is to know right. about him because all of us are seeing that there's right. something very different about this child. Right. It's not that they've threatened somebody. It's not that they've done it. There just is something different about this child. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do anything beyond right. that, but you have to start working with these kids. Right. That's that one or two or five percent that we're talking about. Right. And, and the, you know, right now they would say, well, we should tell the school psychologist. Well, the school psychologist, you know, the reality is in, in most districts, the school psychologist is itinerant. And so right. that means that they're covering multiple schools, which means that they may be at, and especially at a high school, they're mm -hmm. only going to be at the high school maybe once a week. Mm -hmm. If that, maybe once every other week or so. Right. Right. Um, and it's just about as that regular at a middle school. Right. Their primary focus is elementary school because that's when they identify learning disabilities and all that kind of stuff. And so the mm -hmm. primary focus is then. But when we're talking about mental health needs, we really have to be focusing at the middle and high school levels. We're talking about middle and high school students, right? right. We don't have to worry about the elementary school not students. As much. They're, they're right. not produced. That's not. That's not where this is happening. Okay? Right. We have to protect those kids. Right. But we don't have to do prevention at the elementary level. Right. And school counselors and and, and school social workers are itinerant, just like school mm -hmm. psychologists. Mm -hmm. And school counselors, you know, they have so many administrative responsibilities. That's right. You know, at the high school level, they're spending most of their time working with students as far as, you know, um, getting them ready for college mm -hmm. and, and trying to get their schedules organized right. and all that kind of stuff, that they don't have the opportunity to do much counseling. Exactly. So right. we, we need to have, at a building level, mm -hmm. a person there that's, that's sole responsibility is... is and mental health. That's right. And train that person in risk assessment. Right. Okay. We know how to do that. We do it here in mm -hmm. the office. Train that person in risk assessment and have them available that that's their primary responsibility. So right. if the schools across the county suddenly said, we have this kid we're concerned about, the, the next day you can go there and start working with that kid. Right. Okay. You, so you have to have people who are um, educated, mm -hmm. trained. Uh, in risk assessment and who are available right, right now we don't we don't make any accommodation for right. that it, yeah. so if we think about you know some of the circumstances that we've even had here in our county exactly. over the past couple of weeks we've had students suspended and expelled from schools for I'm sorry just making stupid statements there's they're saying they're saying something stupid and because of the concern because of the heightened right. um, concern about everything they're being suspended and expelled Instead of suspending and expelling them, they could see this mental health person there in the, in the school. A risk assessment can be done to determine if the person really is at risk for doing something. And then a, then a plan can be put into place to help resolve those issues. We, had a, we, had, we have several cases. Some have to remain confidential. Sure. But there was one in the paper yesterday, so I think it's mm -hmm. okay to talk about it. A boy, high school, I think he's a high school senior, was expelled. Not just expelled. Now he has a felony. Right. Okay. So because he, he um, said, it doesn't matter whether you say or text. Okay? Right. So he happened to text it, Snapchat it or something, that he wanted to kill somebody. Mm -hmm. He wanted to kill, he was reacting to being bullied. Right. Okay. So here's a kid who's had been subjected to bullying, name calling, and in a fit of frustration, uh, this teenager says, I'd like to kill them. I'm going to kill them. This is not the only teenager in history who has said, I'm going to kill somebody. Right. Um, in fact, our president said that he could kill in the middle of Times Square yeah. and get away with it. Right. Okay. Uh, no, he didn't get a felony, didn't get arrested. Right. Okay. People talk like that. Okay? Right. Some people talk like that sometimes. Right. We have all said, I'd like to kill the, the, the you know, it's, it's not, it's not that unusual. Right. I mean, people... People say these things, especially kids. Not that it's right, right. But, it, but they do say it. Or they say, I'd like to kill myself. Right. Everybody has said that. Right. I, I think. I mean, yeah. most of us, I like to kill myself. That doesn't mean you mean it. 
Right. Okay. It doesn't mean that you're suicidal. It doesn't mean that you don't get you, Baker Act. Right. You don't get okay. So, but we've said, but but now these words have take have such meaning. Okay. Right. So at the prevention level, as soon as those words are uttered or texted or tweeted or mm -hmm. Snapchatted or Instagrammed, this the, these professionals can go in and say, was this stupidity or is this a danger? Right. And we have to have that system in place. Right. Okay. We have to devote time, energy, money to have a system in place because now this kid has a felony. Right. Okay. Now right. he's unemployable. He won't have a high school education, so he can't get a job right. because he doesn't have a high school degree. He has a felony, so he can't get hired anywhere. Right. For making a stupid comment. Right. Do we really want to do that to our citizens? Right. You know, to our children. Right. No, absolutely. And and it, it puts what happens is because of the way the system is right now something stupid like that is said right and we go immediately to our reaction right. and our, our only response right now is suspension or expulsion that's, that's right. our that's our and, only and to response criminalize from, right what is just stupid behavior what right. is, it's um not stupid it's um uh, impulsive right okay. mm -hmm. yeah so so we have to have somebody at this at the building level right. there to to address those issues to right. to see if the, there's really a threat mm -hmm. and then to um, begin a process of dealing with right. that um, that potential threat, and you know a, a risk assessment assesses you know static, dynamic, and protective factors. Mm -hmm. You have to address all three. Right. You know, um, so so your static factors are those things that are mm -hmm. stable. Those right. things, those are historic things usually. Um, dynamic things are you know do that does the person have mm -hmm. access to weapons does the person have you know um mm -hmm. current substance abuse issues and those right. kinds of things then of course nice protective factors right which can be the person there at the campus that's helping to you deal know, with these issues i think of the kid who's who's a little bit odd or a little bit not athletic um odd looking or odd behaving who gets bullied and bullied and bullied year after mm -hmm. year after we know those that happens okay so they get bullied year after year after year after year um, and so finally the child has had enough and said, I'd like to kill all of you. Well, the first thing that should happen is this assessment and you go into the child's home and you discover under his bedroom that he has a, a, a case full of, uh, high powered assault right. rifle. Okay. That's one thing. Right. You go into another kid's home and now we don't have guns. He doesn't have access to guns. He's, he's been crying about being bullied all this time. Those are two very, very different situations. Right. And we need to, we need to deal Currently, with Currently we treat one. them the same. We treat them the same. They're right. both felons. They're both going to jail. They're both going to get, be expelled right. from school. Um, we need to be a little more judicious. Right. We have the knowledge. We're just not using it. Right. Right. And, and the, the, the third level, right. so we have the, the, school, the classroom level, the school building level, right. and the third level is associated with what we're just talking about, and that is, that's the, that's the district or the state or even the federal level. That's right. Where we have to have other things in place right. for these. When we, you've said this before, and, and it's so difficult because you, there's a couple of words in the statement that you want to figure out how to put some emphasis on. Mm -hmm. When you expel someone, what are you expelling them to? That's right. Where right. are they going? Right. And the problem is, is that they're not going anywhere. When Nicholas Cruz was expelled, right. where did he go? Right. He, he didn't have a home. Right. Because his mother had died and mm -hmm. he was out of the foster care system. Right. Because he was 18. Right. So where was he expelled to? Right. And, and at, at 16, 17, 18, you're, you're expelled. So you don't have a high school, you, you said this a moment ago, you don't have a high school diploma. You don't have a place to go. So you don't have any training. So you can't go in the military. You can't go, right. you know, you can't, you're going to have a really difficult time getting a job. Mm -hmm. um, what are you going to do? You don't have any training with now, any if, skills. But if, if, a, if a person is truly a danger. Right. Maybe you do want th this to happen. I mean, I, I don't think you want that person to languish on the streets. Right. Because there's still going to be a danger right. to somebody. Mm -hmm. Okay. But do we really want to do this? Mm -hmm. What you just, that litany of mm -hmm. disadvantages, do we really want to do that to kids who are making impulsive, right. childish, teenage statements? But we won't know that until we have that second layer where right. we do the, the risk assessment and everything. Right. So you do the risk assessment, you figure out if the person is really mm -hmm. a risk or not. 
at that level, then you can implement some of these third right. layer um, strategies or, right. or plans. Uh, one, for example, you know, when we think about, you know, someone like Nicholas Cruz or someone, you know, we keep mentioning him specifically, but you can, there's yeah. lots of examples right. um, of students for this who aren't going to go to college. They're, they're just not going to pursue that higher mm -hmm. education. Why don't we have in place a, a system for them to get vocational training? Um, that's sort of, um, well, I, I mentioned this to, a, to somebody the other day. And they said, well, there, there are vocational schools through the public school systems. Mm -hmm. You know, here, here in our county, we have two. Um, the problem is, is that, first off, if you, for you to say, I go to this vocational school, right. I, 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 I really stigma. hate using there's this a, word. I used there's to hate, a stigma attached there, to it. There, there is a stigma attached right. to it because the expectation. You can't do anything else, so you have to go there. Right. Because right. the expectation that we have right now is that you're going to go to college. Right. No. That should not be our expectation for everyone. It, everyone is not going to go to college. Feel that. It's true. A year or two ago, we had something passed called ESSA, the Every Student Succeeds Act, which replaced earlier. Right. Acts. That means in career or college. Right. But if you're in high school today, you're taking a college preparatory curriculum right. at least for the first two years. Right. I don't know what happens after that. Right. The first two years, you're taking Algebra One, and you're going to take a right. foreign language, right. and you're going to pass them, or you're not going to get a degree. Right. If you have, if a student has an IEP, an individual education plan, meaning that they have a learning disability, or they have their other health impaired, or they have some mm -hmm. disability under the category of, or under the Act of the um, Indivi Individuals with Disability Education Act, right. at the age of fourteen, right. The school determines whether that student is on a standard diploma track or a special diploma track. That, that's decided at 14. Right. If a student wants to go to a vocational school, right. they can't do that until they're 16, 17 sometimes. Um, that's right, to your junior. And so they're, right. until they're about a junior in high school. Right. Mm -hmm. So that means that they've already had to in, endure, I'm going to use that word, uh, two years of high school which oftentimes means two years of college failure. Doing college prep work. Right. Foreign language. For which they know they're not going to go to college. Right. They right. have no interest in going to college. Mm -hmm. Why can't we, for just as this, using this example, why can't it be that a, a high school freshman can say, you know what, I'm not going to go to college. Right. I'd like to learn how to, I'd like to become an auto mechanic. I'd love to work on cars. That's all I ever wanted to do was work on cars. Why can't that person go to a vocational school, get their basic education that they need, you know, just That's all right. that they need for mm -hmm. a high school diploma, but also be getting training right. that, of what they're going to do. Right. I, had a, I had a guy that I, um, that I know uh, in my family who wanted to be um, a welder. That's, that's all he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And he's failing in school. He's struggling in school. And, you know, as soon as he was able to get to the vocational mm -hmm. school, it's like, everything turned around for him. Why can't we do that earlier? It doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. No, again, we can. Yeah. We just don't have the will to do it. Right. I mean, we know what needs to be but done. That's a simple but, change. But when we talk about devoting resources, again, I want to go back to that. How much is it going to cost to arm, right. teach, arm and train teachers? If we have money for that, surely we have money. Don't yeah. we have money? Please, governors, legislators, mm -hmm. don't we have money to do all the other things that need to be done? Even if you agree that we have to harden schools and arm everybody, right. don't we have resources to do all the other things that we know have to be done? We live, we have something called a code of conduct mm -hmm. in, dis, in school districts, right. at state and district levels. And the code of conduct is, if you um, commit these violations, mm -hmm. these are the automatic punishments. Right. Let's not think about it. Let's not apply right. any, any uh, knowledge or let's just punish for breaking these rules. Right. Okay? The code of conduct, the codes of conduct have got to be rewritten yeah. to reflect what's really going on in schools today. The codes of conduct don't protect kids from bullies and they don't do anything to help us identify who the potential risks are. Right. It's time to redo these things. Right. Yeah. So, and that's at, that's that third layer. That that's third that layer. district, 
state and federal level. We, right. we have to have some of these other things in place. You know, the things that we were talking about, you know, with the vocational, that's from an educational perspective. A lot of kids act out behaviorally because they can't cope educationally. Right. Um, so if we address the issue that way, right. we may decrease problems. If we have that second layer of mm -hmm. mental health services in the schools, we're going to prevent issues because right. we're going to be addressing problems mm -hmm. at the earliest possible stage. Right. That's right. Now, will this plan prevent all pro violence in schools? Of course not. But nothing is going to prevent all no. violence no, in if schools. The, if a child wants to shoot somebody, a child, if a teenager wants to shoot somebody, there are ways if, to get guns in schools. If anybody wants to. That's right. And you, you can't, I mean, sadly, you, you can't prevent right. it. I mean, completely. we've had we've had laws and things in place here in the country since the country started. But you know, if we address yeah. these groups, I talked about the kids who are mentally ill, students mm -hmm. who are mentally ill, who because of their mental illness are impaired, right. and schools aren't dealing with them because they're not trained to deal with right. them. Okay, they're not physicians, they're not uh, professional psychologists. So, so we have this large group of students who have mental, the various types of mental illness who are underserved. Right. Okay, by our culture. Right. And we have all the kids who are underserved educationally. Right. We were, what you were talking about is you have all these students who don't plan to go to college, who should be trained to do the things that they want to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. It can still be a rigorous training program. Sure. I mean, my son went through the firefighter and paramedic training. That's not easy. Right. I mean, it's not like it's an easy way out. Right. They still have to read and do math and calculate formulas. So these other jobs are not an easy way out. Right. And we can make them rigorous enough. Well, and, and I mean, I guess what I would say is who cares if it's an easy way out? You know, if, if, if you want to be a plumber, right? why not be a plumber? Right. You know, if you want, because the world needs plumbers. Mm -hmm. If you want to be an electrician, why not be an electrician? Right. And other people have said, well, that's discrimination. You know, you're saying, well, these kids can go to college, but these kids can't. It's not discrimination. That's choice. And, and, and I'm sorry, but it's reality. And and not all kids are going to go. In fact, right now, only 40% go and succeed. Right. About 40%, right. I think. That the, might be an overestimate. That we can, you know, it might yeah. even be fewer than that. Right. But when I was, um, when you and I went to college, it was about 20% right. who went to college. Right. So, so. so right now, with it as wide open as you want it to be, with the mm -hmm. expectation that everybody can and should go to college, Still, only 40% are going and graduating. That's right. And still, everybody, you know, when we talk about educational opportunity, we're talking about opportunity. Everybody has the opportunity to go right. to college. Everybody may not choose to go to college. Right. One way or another, they right. may not choose to go to college. And, 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 and the difference, I think, that's important with what we're talking about compared to what other countries do mm -hmm. is we're not talking about giving eighth graders a test That's right. and determining based upon the test results yeah. whether that person is going to be on a college track mm -hmm. or on a vocational track. I'm not talking about that. Right. This is an option. This is, this you know, is a... what do you want? Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, get, I, I get the argument that, well, you know what, at 14 they might not know for sure. We live in a world today, and, and I think this is something that a lot of adults have to recognize. We live in a world today where... If you're 27 years old and you say, you know what, I've been working for 10 years as a plumber mm -hmm. and I'd like to do more. Right. You can go back you, to school. You can go back. There are plenty of options. I, again, admittedly, in the, in the 80s and 90s even, that wasn't the case. Always possible. Uh, the, right. the, the, the plan was, and, and the, real, the, um, the statistics showed at that time, mm -hmm. that if you didn't go to college right after high school, then you probably you weren't probably very likely to go to, to go to college. Even if you took a break in your college, right. you know, you left for a year. Right. Chances of you finishing went way down. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not true anymore. No. Mm -hmm. There are more, too many ways. More and more people are going back to school later. Yeah. Uh, we have online schools. We have... All the, all, the all state, this. the community colleges became state colleges. Right. Uh, which offer a very different kind of option. Right. That didn't exist 10 years ago. Right. We have online courses. Right. We have MOOCs, you know, courses that you don't mm -hmm. have to take for credit, but you can take for right. experience. You can do work experience counts for college credit. There are numerous ways now right. to change. And... To change your mind in your twenties, yeah, or thirties, yeah. I mean, when I when I was uh, finishing up my graduate program, mm -hmm. there was a guy that graduated 
at the same time, and he was in his 60s, right. and he was getting his PhD. Right, right. I, I mean, so I it's... Do that. It's... <laughs> get another one. <laughs> but it's... The reality is, is that there's... It's not... No longer is it that what you're doing at 18 is what you're set to do the rest of your That's life. Right. 14 it's, it's or 18 or 25. Right. You know. It's not like that anymore. Right. And so allowing a 14-year-old, and I get that he's 14, but allowing a 14-year-old to make some of these decisions, giving him some age, him or her some agency about his life, uh, some, some decision-making authority as far as what his future is, giving him that opportunity... Even if it's at risk for undershooting what you sort of anticipate for him for the rest of his life, it's going to it, it's potentially it's going to be okay. I'm smiling because how many 14 year olds do you have currently in your practice who have made the decision <laughs> because they've stopped doing homework? Right. They've stopped doing their they've stopped studying. Right. That's and it. Makes the parents the, crazy. Right. The, but they're making the decision. Not to. Right. Whether we... So this whole thing about, well, we can't let them make that decision, they're making it anyway. Right. We, I have plenty of students in middle school and early high school who have said, I, I'm just not going to do this anymore. Right. They've already made the decision. Right. The problem today is they have no other option. Right. We're not giving them an alternative. Right. They're making the decision right. with no alternative. Right. What we're saying is, let them make the choice, and but give them an alternative. Right. Yeah, and that and that's that third layer. We have to, right? We have to be more. Uh, we have to offer more options. That's right. Um, because right now we're not. We're just that's not. Right. So, so if we, you know, we teach, we instruct teachers. We provide training for teachers to identify students mm -hmm. at risk, and then we have services at the schools right. to provide the mental health and the emotional health and behavioral health support that the right. students need. And then have alternative programs for these students mm -hmm. to actually use that's going to give them a right. future. Right. I think that that would... Again, what we're saying is, take all that money. If you want to harden schools and you want to spend money on training and arming teachers, okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. But let's take, let's, let's, let's use... Let's use equal resources right. to do all the other interventions that we know right. will be effective. Right. I, I think that, the, and, the, and the, the bottom line to me is that the, what we're talking about, this plan, um, it, it is a, we always talk about, our, our little slogan mm -hmm. is teach, don't punish. This approach teaches. This approach provides support, education, and information to service providers, to the students, to the families, to the community. Many of the other strategies that have been proposed, whether mm -hmm. it's Army teachers or whoever, is a punishment model. It doesn't teach anything. And we have to teach. We, if we want people to learn, we have to teach them. Right. We can't assume that they're going to. We can't. We can't assume that knowing that there's the possibility of a person on campus that has a gun is going to deter them from going to shoot at the school. We can't assume that. And you know, you and I are um, not just critics. Mm -hmm. We try not to be critics. We try not right? to. I mean, we. It's easy to be a critic, you know. Yeah. But as somebody said one time, there's never been a monument directed to a critic. Right. Um, we're, we're not just critics. Um, mm -hmm. And we, we both believe in um, put your money where your mouth is. Right. And I would say to governors, presidents, legislators, uh, local leaders, um, go ahead and use us. Yeah. Um, we, we, I'm not... I won't ask for any money, but I'm saying take a tiny fraction of what you're spending to harden targets. Mm -hmm. We will train people how to do this. Right. We have the knowledge. We have the right. expertise. Not Come just on us. In. Uh, any, any, right. You and know, we can put still... together a training program. It could be at the county level, state level, federal level. Yeah. That will, that will help. It will teach professionals how to identify who these right. um, at-risk students might be. 
um, and come up with um, workable, practical, inexpensive ways mm -hmm. of accomplishing all the things we want to accomplish to end these things. We, we have the knowledge. We're simply not using the information we have. Right. Okay. So it's not it's not a costly multi million dollar program that we're advocating. Right. Uh, the pieces are already in place. They just have to be put together. Right. We would be happy to do it. We will put our money where our mouth is. Right. We will be happy to do this. Right. All you have to do is call. Yeah. Let us know. Yeah. It's it's um, it's it's not something that has to be created from from scratch. Right. We, we, we already have the knowledge. Right. Let's start using it. Right. Okay. Is it not a, it's a fair, call us. Yes. All right. So that is it for today. Yeah. Next week, we're, we're going to shift topics next week and we're going to talk about some different things next week, but, um, we're, we're going to, we're going to come back we're gonna, to We're going to visit this periodically. Well, we are because we are now being asked to do risk assessment. Right. In fact, we right. are doing risk assessments in yeah. our office. So it is a topic that we're going to continue to follow. Mm -hmm. We're going to continue to follow it in the news yeah. uh, because there is some um, some yeah. action here on this whole gun issue. Yeah, right? and, and you know, and we're trying to be involved in the decision making as it mm -hmm. relates to even right. arming teachers. You know, it's it's a strategy that we have a lot of concerns about. But um, like so many of the other things that we mm -hmm. talk about, you know. I, we're not going to bury our heads in the sand. No. You know, the governor signed a bill and, and put it into place that this right. is going to be this is going to happen. Um, we can be critics. We can we no. can argue against it and we can do all right. that kind of stuff. But it doesn't isn't going to change it if it's going to you know if it's going to happen it's going to happen. And so, we've said multiple times, go ahead and do that. I mean, we're not saying don't. I'm saying if that's the decision right. you make, that's fine. But there are these other pieces that right. we should put into place. Exactly. Um, that's all we're saying. We're not saying don't. We're saying, but let's do these other things that right. will that will also aid in solving this horrible problem. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So, all right. Love to hear from you. Hear your thoughts and ideas as well. So, um, but that's it for today. That's it. Until next time. Stay happy. Stay healthy. And forget to be afraid. Thanks for sharing this episode of the Mental Breakdown and Psych Ridge podcast. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to follow us on Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel where you will find all of our previous podcasts and much more. We would be honored if you would become a patron through patreon.com where any donation you can manage will go to the development and creation of more content. Just visit patreon.com slash the mental breakdown for more information. Thanks again for listening. Have an awesome day and we look forward to being back in your feed tomorrow morning.